All I can say is, if she doesn't lose Sam in a hurry, she's going to lose something else pretty fast. You mean Tom? How'd you guess? This is Dr. Walter Bell, and I'd like to bring you another transcribed chapter in the story of Empire County, presented by the New York State Department of Health and produced by the State Radio Bureau. Today's story, A Heavy Date. Elsa Copeland has become something of a fad in Empire County. Seems that a home just isn't complete unless Elsa decorates at least one room. With her amazing sense of style and proportion and her excellent taste, you'd wonder why she wouldn't apply a little of this gift to herself. Norma Bell. Oh, it's so good to see you again. Well, come on in. Hello, Thank Elsa. You. How are you, Walter? Just fine, thanks. Please, don't mind the way this living room looks. <laughs> We've been in the house almost a year, but Walter and I have hardly done a thing to fix it up. That's right. The county keeps their commissioner of health and hey, even his wife pretty busy. So... <laughs> well, Elsa, what's the matter? Elsa. That old brother arm, Norma. Elsa. There. That's it. Now. Thank you. Just put her on the couch. <laughs> Here's a pillow for her feet. <laughs> okay. Should I get anything else, Walter? No, no, no. She's coming around all right. Easy, does it? Yes, are you all right, dear? Mm -hmm. huh? Oh. Yes, yes, huh? I'm all right. Mm -hmm. I guess... Oh, no, no, this is awful. What a foolish thing to oh, do. Oh, Don't no. be silly. I guess I... I just walk o walked over here instead of driving. <laughs> from your home? Mm -hmm. What well, Elsa, that's over a mile from yes, here. Yes, I know. I, I did it because... Well, frankly, I did it to take off some of this extra weight. I guess the walk must have been too much of a strain. Why, you just sit still for a while and relax. All right. Say, by the way, how's that terrific brother of yours? Oh, <laughs> well, I, I just got a letter from George this morning. Oh, good. Oh, what a kid. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He'll be graduating from the Cornell School of Architecture this June. But, but he's very worried. Why? Because he may not be top man in the class. Oh, oh no. You mean he may disgrace the Copeland name by coming in only second? How awful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're really pretty proud of George. Oh, I don't blame you. But you know, you ought to be pretty proud of yourself, too, Elsa. The way you worked to send him through seven years of college and grad school and... Supporting your mother all this time, too. Oh, that's nothing unusual. A lot of people have done the same thing. Yes, but you've sacrificed a great many things to do it. It's worth it. That's right, Norma. George can build the houses, and Elsa here will decorate them, you see. And uh, Tom Whitmore will handle all the legal work. Oh. Right, Elsa? Mm -hmm. You know about Tom. Well, Empire City may have grown a lot in this last ten years, but it's still a small town. <laughs> you don't think you can keep a great romance like that a secret? <laughs> Tom's a wonderful guy, Elsa. He's a lawyer, too. Uh, well, it's it's not quite official yet. Oh. But I'm glad you two know. <laughs> I guess a lot of people have been wondering whether old Elsa Copeland had ever get married. Don't you say that, Elsa. <laughs> well, I sure feel it these past few weeks. I've been huffing and puffing like an old steam engine. Elsa, maybe you ought to have your doctor give you a checkup. Mm, spoken like a true doctor's wife, <laughs> Norma. <laughs> Besides, I didn't come here to bother you people with my troubles. I thought you wanted some advice on how to decorate this room. Yeah, you're perfectly right, we do. Well, here it is. Kind of a barren setup. It looks like one of those magazine pictures labeled before. <laughs> well, let's see if that famous Elsa Copeland touch will work out the magic for us. All right. I'll be back in a couple of days. Be back when you haven't even oh, looked oh, at them. Don't worry, Norma. That's the way I work. It's second nature with me to study a room carefully, even during a seemingly unrelated conversation. You know, you, you really have a charming room, Norma. Certainly large enough to move around in and always be comfortable. Now, uh, what I'll do is draw up some rough sketches showing different ways in which you can decorate mm -hmm. it. Uh, uh, what about your own personal taste? Uh, that's the most important factor of all. 
But my sketches will at least furnish us with some good starting points. Oh, now I see. <laughs> well, I'll call you as soon as the drawings are ready. And uh, to tell you the truth, another reason I'd like to get back home is to freshen up. Say, uh, Elsa, really, why don't you stop off at your doctor's just for the... Oh, uh, no, I uh, don't have time tonight. I've got a heavy date. Well, thanks right. for coming, Elsa. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, goodbye, dear. Bye. So long. Bye, Walter. You know, honey, she's got things a little mixed up. Hmm? What do you mean? Judging from Elsa's size, I'd say it was Tom who has the heavy date. Yes, I was amazed. Yeah. My, she's put on a lot of weight in the last ten months. Mm -hmm. What a difference. Makes a difference in more than looks, too. Well, I... I certainly hope she gets her man. I hope she gets sense enough to see her doctor. Well, I just know I shouldn't have had that chocolate eclair. Mm -hmm. But they've always been my greatest weakness. My dear, that's what you say about Nesserol pie, sweet potatoes, French bread. Every time we go out to eat, you've got a different greatest sweetness. Now, Steve, I've kept my figure pretty well, haven't I? Hmm? Yeah, this pie is good, isn't it? Well, haven't I? What? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Don't look now, but there's Elsa Copeland sitting over there near the door. Where? Oh. Yes. Certainly never saw anybody put on so much weight in such a hurry in my life. That's Tom Whitmore with her, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. I've heard about those, too. Well, I think it's a disgrace, Elsa, letting herself and her figure go like that. Mm -hmm. Just to be so pretty, too. Oh, my, that we changed her so. Mm -hmm. Well, all I can say, El, is if she doesn't lose some in a hurry, she's going to lose something else. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tom? How'd you guess? Tom. Tom. Huh? Uh, you were miles away, weren't you? Miles away? Not exactly. Oh, I won't pry into your innermost heart. Well, thanks, Elsa. Tom, what's the matter? It's hardly touched a bit of your food tonight. No, that's true. I haven't. Tom. Oh, I'm sorry, Elsa. I didn't mean it that way. It's just that... Well, I guess an old bachelor like me is bound to get these spells once in a while. You mean it's prospect of being tied down for life? Well, don't take it too seriously, Elsa. I won't. But, well, things have changed since we first met. Things? Now, look, let's not get into a childish spat here. We're, we're both too grown up for that. These things that have changed, uh, uh, do they have anything to do with your breaking our two dates for next weekend? Don't be silly, Elsa. You don't understand. Here comes that Mrs. Smithers. She doesn't miss a thing. Hi, it's Elsa Copeland. Darling, I almost didn't recognize you. Have you been? Very well, thank you. Uh, I'd like you to meet Mr. Whitmore and Mrs. Smithers. Mrs. Smithers? How do you do? I've been hearing so much about you, Elsa. We must get together and talk things over soon. Uh, yes, we must. It's so nice seeing you, Mrs. Smithers. Uh, yes. <laughs> Well, good night. Good night. I never did like that woman. You didn't? Why? Tom, it's silly to go on like this. I'm going home. Elsa, wait. I'll come with you. No, please, don't. I want your advice. Well, I'll be glad to help in any way I can, Elsa. Well, uh, there are a lot of reducing pills on the market, and I'd like to know which one to use. Recommend which one that you recommend. Reducing pills? Yes. I'm beginning to think that I can lose a few pounds without losing any of my energy. Well, to be honest with you, Elsa, I don't recommend any of them for you. Y you mean you don't think I'm too fat? No, I didn't say that. You could lose 30 pounds. I'd be glad of it. You're joking, Doctor. <laughs> 30 pounds? Yes. Well, I'd fall over if I lost all that weight. And more likely you'll fall over if you keep carrying all that weight. Oh. 
Well, as a matter of fact, I sort of fainted this afternoon at Dr. Bell's house. The commissioner of health? Oh, yes. I'm going to decorate their living room, and while I was there, I you got... You were probably to... moving around quite a bit, bending over, and you nearly passed out. No, I, I think it was just the result of too long a walk. But, uh... Two days ago, I did bend over to pick up some fabric swatches that I dropped, and I almost fainted then, too. Uh Uh-huh. Probably at the end of each day, you just fagged out, dead tired. Your breathing is difficult. That's right. Elsa, you should take off about 30 pounds, and you'll feel better. Carrying all that extra weight puts an awful strain on your heart. It has to pump your blood through all that extra fat. It's like the strain on an automobile motor when you drive with the brakes on. But if we're born to be fat, what are we going to do? Diet our whole lifetime? Nobody's born to be fat, my dear. We're all born with just about the same raw material. Oh, a few have glandular trouble. Not very many. And even these have to eat more than they need to be fat. Goodness knows, in my business, I get enough exercise. I'm walking all the time. Yes, that's another common mistake, Elsa. You have to walk five miles to walk off one piece of pie. No, you're fat because you've developed wrong eating habits, and you stay fat by keeping on eating too much. Well, uh, well, what about these pills? Pills don't make up for bad eating habits. There's no such thing as a 10-day wonder diet. The only thing that can correct bad eating habits is to educate yourself into good eating habits. Then you'll lose your excess poundage. You'll feel better. You'll look better, and you'll live longer. Live longer? Why, certainly. Fat people are more likely to have diabetes, heart disease, kidney trouble, high blood pressure, and a lot of other pretty serious complaints. Well, I guess you'd better prescribe a diet for me, Dr. Brewster, and I promise to keep at it. Well, now, let's not call it a diet. How about planned figure control? (laughs) Well, it sounds more glamorous. (laughs) What is it? Well, first, let's start with what you need to eat each day. Now, you see, every person needs just so many calories. Dr. Brewster evidently set Elsa on the right path as far as food was concerned, and that path apparently led right to the altar. Only a few months later, while Norma and I were sitting in our newly decorated Elsa Copeland living room... Well, hello, Elsa. Hello, Norma. Come on in and look at your draperies. They just went up yesterday. Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. Hello, Walter. Hi, Elsa. Say, this room looks grand. Even if I do say so myself. Doesn't it? Say, you look pretty terrific yourself. Doesn't you? Oh, uh, uh, that's what I came to see you about. Uh, That and, uh, well, Tom and I are going to be married next month. Oh, uh, And in a way, you two are responsible. What do you mean we're responsible? responsible? Well, it was on your suggestion that I went to see Dr. Brewster. Uh, You know, about my weight. Oh, yeah. Well, I wanted you to be the first to know. I'm here to personally invite you to the Maple Avenue Church three weeks from Sunday. I've got a really heavy date there with Tom Whitmore and Reverend Fairchild. Thank you.